Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and we are in P5JS. This is a morphing mandala that I made. This thing is just super trippy, as you can see. There's a link in the description. You can play this in your browser. You can also play this thing on your phone, and you can look at the source code. If it's on your computer, you can hit P to pause it, and then P again to unpause it. You can hit N for new art and it starts over with a different number of petals, a different number of layers. I'll hit N again. And then you can also hit S for save and it will create a JPEG. And you can put that on your wall if you like. We can also change the type right now. It's doing complex and mostly see-through, but I can change it to type two and now we're getting something that's solid and it has an outline to it. Let's do new art. And there we go. Before I start talking briefly about the code, if you've liked this video so far, you can give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you think this is cool, please share it with some friends. It does use your computer resources a bit. I've got my fan is starting to whir on me. We can also change the rate of pedal change. So if I were to say, make this times five, uh, this might be a little crazy. There we go. <laughs> and that's a little too much, I think. I like the kind of sedate 0 0.5 better. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and do uh, 10.5 just to see. Oh, <laughs> too much. We can also change the rate of the color change. So if I do 5.4 instead of 1.4, you'll see the color is changing a lot faster. So I don't want to go line by line through all of the code. I've already described how I made the basic mandala in a previous video. So I'll leave a link to that and you can go watch that. But basically what I've done here is I've created an array, and there's two arrays that keep changing places. When it does new art, it figures out how many petals it's gonna have, it figures out how many layers it's gonna have. Then it goes through a loop to figure out the petal shape for each layer, and it saves all that information into an array. It also is starting out with a hue for each layer, that goes into the array, and then all the points in the petals also have a direction that they're moving and they're all moving outward to start with, or in a positive direction. So all of that gets saved into the array as well. Then we get into the draw function, and we start pulling information out of that array. So it just as one set of variables in the array, we've got one x position, and we've got an x direction, and so we're adding the x position to an x direction to get a new x position. Now that particular x, this x1 that I'm looking at here, has a boundary. And so if it hits the edge of the boundary, it's going to reverse direction. It, if it hits the other edge of the boundary, it also reverses direction. And then it also has a random chance to change direction. It's a very slim chance, but it, it's there. The hue also has a direction where either it's going up or it's going down, and it has a random chance of changing direction. And then the results of all of this new information gets put into a new array, pushed in. We draw the petals here, and then right at the end, we replace the original array with this new array, and then start over. And here's the section on the type of mandala. So if it's a type 1 mandala, its brightness is 100, which is the maximum, and the alpha is very low, and there's no stroke, no lines. And if it's a type 2 mandala, then the alpha is way up, the brightness I had to lower because it was too intense, and a line is drawn around all the petals. So that's all I want to say about this, except that I'm really excited about it. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Since this is a really short video, let me show you one more project. This is my Many Mandalas project. I will also leave a link to this in the description. I can change the number of mandalas. So I can do four across, or I could even do 20 across. It looks like that. I'm pretty happy with this project as well. And if you want to know how this was coded, there's a video, a link in the description. You can also save a JPEG of this so you can put this on your wall. 
So that's it for this video. If you like this project, if you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.